Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy. So recently I've been trying out some different types of filaments that I can use in the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, mainly abrasive filaments, the filaments that have some unique qualities to it. And I did a video where I just tried out a few different types, but after that video, I decided to try out some wood filled filament. And this is some wood filled filament that I just picked up on a whim. At the same time where I got that cosplay helmet from Timu, I was like, hey, they sell all kinds of filament there too. So let me just grab a roll of some wood filament and see what happens, all right? So it had no brand, no name, no nothing. It's just some generic wood filament. And I ran it through the 5M. And if you're curious about doing that yourself, just know that you definitely need that hardened steel nozzle, either the 0.6 or the 0.8 millimeter. Because if you try to use it with one of the other nozzles, 0.4 and God forbid the 0.2, not only are you gonna wear it out a lot faster, but you're probably gonna end up with a clog because of the wood particles that are contained within that filament. So let me share with you what my experience with this filament has been. I got a few models that I wanna show you as well. I gotta say, this has been some of the most challenging filament that I've ever had to deal with. I first tried to use it just like regular PLA. Let me just keep things at a baseline level and see what happens and then just adjust from there. But man, keeping it at above 200 degrees Celsius on that hot end, it made that filament just ooze out of the nozzle like nobody's business. It was way too hot. And I ended up having to bring the temperature all the way down to about 185 degrees Celsius just to control the oozing. And I also made sure that I dried the filament inside of a filament dryer for at least four hours in order to take out any moisture. With it being wood filament, it's very hygroscopic. It means that it can absorb moisture. That's what wood tends to do. So I did that, I printed with it, and let me show you some of the first results. So first, I wanted to start small, and I printed this little guitar keychain. It's like an acoustic guitar. Let me show you up close. So as far as detail goes, I was able to appreciate the fact that the frets here are nicely separated and then the pit guard is still there nicely detailed. Nothing looks like it's been like fused into each other and there's the back here, fairly decent first layer on the back. But as you can might be able to tell on camera, the finish on the top is definitely not the best. One of the challenges that I ran into um, with this and stringing was also a bit of an issue. I made sure to hit these models with a hot heat gun to get rid of some of the more wispy strings, but just like on the surface, it looks a little bit rough. I tried to do a little bit of uh, adjustments to try to, you know, get it to look better. But before I did that, I just wanted to try out another model. This is something that's also quite small. It was a little, one of these Pokemon characters. I don't know the name, but apparently this is like some type of tree based Pokemon. So I, I thought, okay, why not? And you know, he's not great. <laughs> you see like those layer lines are pretty pronounced on him. There was also a good amount of stringing on him as well. And as I was hitting it with the hot heat gun, because these parts on him are just so thin, the way that it was designed, it heated up a little bit too much and it ended up falling off. So there was something on top of his head that's now broken. But as I was printing with these guys, I wasn't too thrilled with how they were working out. I thought, okay, well, what can I do to try to up the quality on this? So one of the things that I wanted to do was lower the layer height, try to grab some more quality out of it. So from the default 0.3 millimeter layer height that, that the profile that Flash 4 provides, that's the standard layer height, I decided to bring it down to as low as I can go and it ended up being 0.15 layer height. And then I also thought, well, these are really small things and when it comes to larger nozzles, you don't get a larger nozzle for detail, you get a larger nozzle so that you can get things done faster, lay down more plastic quicker. So I wanted to print something bigger to see what happened. So what did I do? I found Groot, older Groot, the first Groot from the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy film. So here's Groot right here, a little bit bigger, of course, and Although he came out okay, there's still these, these layer lines, like almost like they're due to speed moving, 
a bit too fast. He also had some stringing going on on the top, so I hit it with the heat gun to kind of get rid of those uh, strings. But uh, even on the surface, you know, there's still like some little like imperfections and stuff, you know, here and there. And so from there, I thought, all right, what if I just slow things down and keep the layer height the same that it was before, the 0 0.15. But this time I decided to slow down the print speed for the outer walls and I slowed it all the way down to 70 millimeters per second for the next print. And since the roll of filament I got was pretty small, about 250 grams, something like that, I didn't have a whole lot of filament to work with. So I just tried to make it count. So I went for something more decorative this time around and I decided to print out this vase or this vase. And you can kind of see a close up of it right here. And it again had that stringing going on, strings along the outside of it. And I dried the filament again. It was the second time that I dried it, fresh out of the filament dryer, still nice and warm. And I still had a little bit, a little bit of string stuff going on, but this is supposed to be a weathered vase. So the lines that you see kind of moving kind of vertically or, or kind of slanted, it's supposed to be like that because that's the way that it was designed. But at the same time, you know, the, the outer surface is still a tiny bit rough, not in the texture, but just in these little tiny strings that the heat gun just wouldn't quite get rid of. And then on the inside, you might be able to see it might be a little bit too dark, but the inside is, you know, also on the sides of it. It's just it's very stringy, you know, it's very stringy. But I will tell you that as I was printing with this filament, uh, it, it smells kind of good. It definitely smelled a little bit like wood and like a little hint of chocolate, actually. It wasn't a bad smell at all. Um, I didn't want to stick around and linger because I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be good for me to continuously breathe that in. But as far as smelling filament goes, as it's printing, this was kind of fragrant, fragrant and pleasant. But anyway, the vase when I slowed it down, I'm looking at like those those lines that might be attributed to speed. And I'm, I'm definitely I still see it there like a little bit of blurriness, just a little bit, not a whole lot. But I think something of this design, it kind of helps to mask it a little bit since it's already uh, supposed to look weathered and whatnot. So for this filament, I was thinking, OK, maybe it's not the greatest filament in the world, maybe a higher quality wood filament for something, uh, a brand that you know and you recognize would be a better way to go about this. Um, but I, I'm not sure. I'll have to try some other types of wood filament to really get a sense of it. But I, I do like this vase and I was wondering, I wonder if this can look even better with a little bit of post processing, like sanding. And maybe after sanding, maybe a little bit of uh, some type of finish to put on it to really help to bring it out. So let me see what that's like. So I sanded this vase a bit here. You can see all the discoloration that came from sanding it, but that's just a whole part of the process. So I just wanted to get it nice and smooth. I did some wet sanding, so that's why it's uh, wet at the bottom. So I'm just waiting for all of this to dry. And uh, then I'm going to hit it with some stain and see what it's going to look like afterwards. So now I'm going to apply some stain to this vase. This is what I'm using. This is a stain and sealant. It's a small canister. I got it from Home Depot for about $5. So I'm just going to use this paintbrush here and apply the sealant and see how it turns out. So here is the near finished project. The varnish on it has not dried yet, but when it is dry, it should look pretty much just like this. So if you can imagine what it looked like before I did anything to it fresh off the printer and how this vase looks now, I think it looks pretty cool. And this is also a very nice design. So if you want to try yourself some wood filament, go right ahead. You can get it from Timu if you want. Um, I do have a link down there. So if you haven't shopped there before, you should be able to get yourself a pretty decent discount on the filament that they have there. But it's all up to you. But that's all for now, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I will speak to you soon.